Let's talk to Teresa Vu. She's our Vice President of Engineering at AppNexus. We're going to talk about the connection and power between art and technology. Let's do this. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, what's up, y'all? I am uh, really happy and kind of nervous to be here. Um, I want to talk about the connection between art and technology, uh, or I almost call this how my rap career helped me build the largest independent ad tech platform, or alternatively, how my mom said, if you want to be a rapper, be the best computer scientist, doctor, <laughs> lawyer, rapper you can be. Uh, no, uh, that's, that for real happened. Um, I, think, I think I picked the easiest one to pair rapping with. Um, but really what I wanted to talk about today was this dual career that I had and how I pretty much kept it compartmentalized because I thought it didn't really play well together. Uh, but, you know, maybe it does. So quickly a bit about me because I feel like I got to justify why I'm talking to y'all for 10 minutes. Um, I'm currently the VP of Engineering at AppNexus. Uh, we are the largest independent ad tech pl platform in the world and one of the biggest startups in New York City. Uh, I actually got to be employee number nine of what is now a 1,200 person company. So I got to see it from fledgling startup to young enterprise and that's just been a rare and just mind blowing, like really great opportunity. Um, I run the real time platform team, which is a bunch of nerds that do like high scale, low latency uh, application software. Uh, pretty challenging, pretty fun stuff. Uh, we basically, um, handle like at peak time, 5 million requests per second. Uh, just, I mean, like here's a graph, it's hard, it's fun. Um, <laughs> the, the, other, the other career that I have is I, I'm an MC in this group called Magnetic North in Taiwan. And I've been, I've been rhyming for a long time. Uh, uh, I've always loved it. I, I, I thought I was gonna, I was, thought I was gonna be a rapper. Um, I mean, I am. Um, and so we released, a few, we released a few albums, and a few years ago, actually got signed by a Japanese record label. Um, and they re-released one of our CDs, uh, you see Homeward there, and kind of crazy, mind-blowingly, we charted on their hip-hop charts. Uh, we made it to number three, uh, which is, thank you, uh, pretty cool. Um, you know, when you're a musician, you kind of don't want to think about external validation because it'll mess you up. But if you want to give it to me, I'll definitely take it. So. <laughs> So this was really cool. Um, although, to be honest, the part, like when I felt like I really made it, like I really, I really like, you know, life goal status was when I went to this uh, karaoke bar in K-Town and in this like three ring binder with like these laminated pages um, with sake and soju and beer and who knows what else on these pages, uh, there, there was my song. And uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I'm right, I'm right next to Ciara, you cannot ask, you cannot ask for more than that. Um, so, life goals bucket list. Uh, essentially, um, I was really happy that I did both and that I didn't give up one or the other. But what was really hard for me was, uh, was basically having these two careers coexist. I had kept them really compartmentalized because I believed that they actually detracted from each other. Um, I don't have a lot of street cred to begin with and I thought being a programmer on top of it would just kill the rest. Um, <laughs> And like in terms of tech, you know, uh, being an artist doesn't really necessarily help either. The culture and technology is one of like, you know, objective, data-driven, rationale, logic, and art is subjective and full of feelings, lots of feelings. And if you want to get a tech project derailed or a tech design torn apart, like the easiest thing to do is talk about your feelings. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's, it's something where I just thought I gotta keep these two strictly apart. For me, I never even thought about how they could work together until um, my boss at the time came to one of my shows and he said something to me that made it click. Um, at the time, I had recently gotten promoted to team lead and I was horrible. I was so bad at it. I, uh, I didn't really stand up for any of the things that I, that I believed were right, like the prioritizations, uh, the tech designs. Um, I didn't even call out some of my employees for being assholes because they were, like I just let them walk all over me. And I wasn't doing a great job. Anyways, after the show, my boss comes up to me and he's like, you know, I want, I want the conference room TV to be the same as the onstage TV. And I was like, what? He's like, that's, that's just what I want. And what he was implying at that time was like the confidence that I had like performing on stage really needed to carry over to work because I was letting people run roughshod over my opinions. Um, like I said, it was like a, it was like a switch moment. 
And it wasn't that I got really intentional about how my music could work with technology as much as I just started, I stopped compartmentalizing it and just kind of let, kind of let them coexist. And uh, what was interesting was not only did they coexist okay, but that they actually built off each other really well. So I wanted to go through a few examples of this. Um, and the, the first one is actually really relevant to the, to the first era of my time at AppNexus. So at a small startup, you know, the first phase is really a small team. You're doing a lot of big things. So you got to do them really fast. Uh, this actually was really hard for me because I'm the type of person that shies away from taking responsibility that I don't think I'm prepared for. I like to be really prepared, um, obsessively prepared for, for all things. So jumping into, um, jumping into new roles or new responsibilities was kind of scary. Um, case in point, like when I actually joined up Nexus, they wanted me to be a developer there. And before then, I was just an analyst. I, was a, uh, I did a lot of data mining. I wrote some scripts that processed data. But I do nothing about building an application, let alone like a low latency application. And what is ad tech? Like, I don't know. Um, and so uh, that, was, that was a difficult time to basically just go head first into it. Um, I actually found that uh, um, when I was working through it that a lot, of, a lot of what I was dealing with was really similar to the art of freestyling. So in hip hop, you know, that's like this improv rap where you're coming off with rhymes at the top of your head. And they're like little leaps of faith, you know, you can't prepare for it because that's lame. You're supposed to just, it is. I mean, you don't want to write, and, you know, people can tell. You, everyone can tell. Um, so you really got to be comfortable with, you know, not being prepared. You got to be comfortable with taking that leap of faith. And you got to be comfortable with not being perfect. And that was the other thing that was really killing me is that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot, okay, not a bit, I'm a lot of a perfectionist. And that is a death knell for a startup. You cannot hole up and write code for three weeks and not push it out to production and not get feedback and not iterate on it quickly. Um, and so I think freestyling really helped me get used to like putting out imperfect stuff out there because at least you're creating, at least you're getting like feedback, at least you're, at least you're like I said, putting yourself out there. Um, and that's a whole lot better than all the songs and rhymes that you write in your bedroom that you throw up and toss away and never see the light of day. So uh, I really felt like for the first era of AppNexus, uh, freestyling taught me the art of going for it and it kind of got me through those, you know, trying times. Um, the next era, uh, was one where I basically went from an individual contributor to leadership. Now, uh, that's a really hard change. Anyone who thinks management is easy honestly hasn't done it. Like, at least systems are somewhat predictable and deterministic. Like, people are just crazy. You know, humans are not, you cannot put a human through GDB or a debugger, you know? Like, I can't be like, if crossed arms, please print feelings to figure out what's, <laughs> to, you know, to figure out what's wrong with you. And like, I mean, no, it's really hard. So it's pretty obvious from the get-go that you want to hire smart, like hardworking, talented people. It's a lot less obvious to figure out how to keep them happy. Um, and for me, the first few years was trying to put out fires that I created myself. I, I, was, uh, I was basically putting all this process in place, you know, uh, structures, trying to come up with the right metrics that will show that the team is being very efficient. And I was pissing off a lot of people, and I didn't quite understand it until uh, I started, I think, realizing that there were parallels between my best engineers and my artist friends. Um, you know, and, and it made me think, what is an artist anyway except someone who expresses themselves through their work? And my best engineers, they live and breathe and die by their code, so of course, you know, they are artists. And then it made me think, oh, oh shit, if I tried to put, my, put an artist friend through a two-week scrum, of course they would hate it, you know? Um, <laughs> Nothing against Scrum if it works for you, but that's the thing. You gotta, you gotta cater it to the artist. Like, I don't think Beyonce is doing story points, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, Rihanna might, but definitely Beyonce does not use story points. Um, and it really gave me a new open door in terms of how I want to manage these engineers. And, the, you know, it's, it's my leadership style. It's not everyone's, but I think the truth was that I, I, didn't get, I didn't find that leadership style until I embraced, like, both of my careers. Um, and that really, you know, and, you know, just to touch on that, like, of all the stats that I showed up earlier, the one that I'm most proud about is that uh, my retention rate on this team is, is really good. Like, over seven years, I've only lost three people, and two of them founded their own company. So, yeah. I, thank you. I, I like to think it's because they're happy, but maybe we're just paying them well. Um, so that brings me to uh, the end, which is, um, you know, when I, when I wrote this, it was like a, a reflection on, I think, how I forgot how human technology is. But technology is really human. It's, it's made for humans, but more than that, like, 
you know, it's built by humans, it is built with humans, like you, you it, there's a very social aspect to it. So of course, you know, like bringing art into it made sense. I don't know why it was so hard for me to, to, to get there, but it took a while. Um, so if you were gonna take away anything from this, um, I would say bring the human element back to technology. I think actually that's what will help us build the right software for the right communities, to hire the right people. Like don't forget that there's other things that make someone a great technologist. And finally, uh, don't be afraid to bring your complete self to whatever it is that you do. Thank you guys. Yeah.